Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Green Line Transformation Community Meeting. We're going to allow a few extra minutes for people to join, to sign in, and to get ready for the meeting. So we'll be back with you in a minute or two. Hello everyone again, and thank you for joining our Green Line Transformation Community Meeting. My name is Nancy Farrell, and I'm a member of the GLT team, and I assist with public engagement and outreach. I'll moderate tonight's meeting. These are great formats, but we do set up some guidelines to make sure the meeting operates efficiently. So I'm going to let you know how it's going to run, and first of all, let you know that it's being recorded so that we can post it after the meeting, and those who can't attend this evening can um, see the meeting afterwards online. We will mute all of the attendees um, during the presentation to prevent any excessive background noise. So patience with that, thank you. Tonight we have multiple interpreters who'll be translating the meeting into Spanish, Russian, and Cantonese. If you require any of these services, please go to the bottom of your screen and you'll see a globe icon, which is an interpretation button. You can click on it and select the language that you want to hear. And if you'd like to hear it in English, please click it in English as well. And this will allow you to hear the translated non-English comments if we get any during the Q&A. So take a moment, so please look for the icon and check English or the language that you'd like to hear, Spanish, Russian, or Cantonese. So we will have time at the end of the meeting for public comment. If you'd like to share a comment or a question, you can use the Q&A feature, which is also at the bottom of your screen, to submit a type question or comment anytime during the meeting. We do ask you to submit only one question at a time. The people who wish to share a question or comment verbally, when we get to that Q&A portion of the meeting, you can press the raise hand button and um, then we will recognize you. But please wait until the comment por portion of the meeting before you hit the raise hand button. When we recognize your name, you'll be unmuted and you'll be able to make your comment or ask your question. And your video will not be in, in, enabled, just your um, microphone. So we will be able to hear what you have to say. After, you share, after we hear your comment, we'll lower your, you'll, we'll lower your hand and you'll be returned to the mute state. If we run out of time to respond to questions, you can email us at glt at mbta.com and we'll respond in writing. You'll also, um, this presentation was posted this afternoon on the MBTA website, and you can go back and look at it again afterwards um, if you have more questions or you just want to review the schedule or any of the other information. So I will repeat these directions again when we get to the Q&A portion of the meeting, but for now we're going to uh, jump in and I'll start with our safety moment. The MBTA likes to start every meeting with a safety moment. We're all in this together right now when it comes to keeping each other safe. We hope that you'll keep doing your part by wearing your face covering, maintaining a social distance, and avoiding large gatherings in accordance with the Commonwealth's latest guidelines and directives for the phased reopening plan. We want everyone to be safe. I now have the pleasure of introducing Angel Pena, who's the Chief of Green Line Transformation Program for the MBTA, and Angel will begin our presentation. Angel? Thank you. Um, well, thank you for joining us tonight to learn about the upcoming work on the E-Branch. Like Nancy said, my name is Angel Peña, and I'm the chief of the Green Line Transformation Program, or as we call it, GLT, here at the MBTA. 
This 28-day full access was first announced in February as part of the MBTA's Building a Better T with intent to address the concerns that we heard from you in our public meetings last fall. In short, you want improvements on the Green Line much sooner. Since then, we have worked hard over the past several months, despite the pandemic, to ensure that this work can be completed while maintaining safety precautions for COVID-19 ensuring that our essential workers have access to transit, and last but not least, supporting the communities that we serve as we proceed with a phase reopening here in Massachusetts. But I wanna take a moment to acknowledge and thank all essential workers, including the T personnel, who have been on the front lines of the pandemic to keep essential services like public transit going. We thank you. Tonight, we will take you through the scope of work and immediate benefits to you once completed. The advantages of performing work this way while ridership is well below normal, the timeline for work, including a specific intersections and locations, the plans for free accessible bus service during construction, and how to stay connected with us with the GLT team during this next month. Before tonight, we have been working closely with the city of Boston, elected officials, the business community, and other key stakeholders to plan these important infrastructure improvements with minimal impacts to you and your communities. Here tonight, we, are, we have from the team, Gwen. Hello. Tamika. Good evening, everyone. Desiree Patrice. Good evening and welcome. welcome. Ben. Good evening. Kimberly. Good evening, everyone. And this is our some of you, you have seen before and many stakeholders groups before and they are fully committed, just like me, to delivering these improvements that you're about to hear tonight. At our public meetings last fall, we shared a holi our holistic vision and approach for improving the quality of service. And we heard your concerns about the reliability, accessibility, and travel times as riders of the Green Line. And how we will improve this service something that we ask, be asked a lot. We will improve the service by increasing the capacity of the line and enhancing accessibility through modernizing our fleet, while at the same time delivering much needed infrastructure, facility and technology upgrades. Each GLT project targets five quality of service dimensions from you as customer's point of view. These five dimensions are safety, capacity, reliability, access, and experience. Safety means that we will be addressing outdated signals and track. Capacity means that we will improve headways, frequencies, and size of fleet with the acquisition of a larger accessible vehicle, the Type 10 supercar. Reliability means to you that will, you will be able to have fewer unplanned service disruptions. Access means that we will improve passenger circulation and ADA compliance. And last but not least, experience means that we will improve comfort, convenience, and communication for all of you. The implementation of this program, it's over the next five, 15 years, and it will provide improvements across all these areas that I just mentioned to give you what you both need and deserve. But at the core of everything that we do is safety. And safety for our riders who rely on our service and safety in the communities we serve and safety to our employees who operate, maintain and improve the system. 
The past several months have required that we take additional precautions. Some of the measures that are in place include frequent cleaning of vehicles and stations, in-station hand sanitizer, social distancing on vehicles, and our Ride Safer campaign to promote hand washing, face coverings, and social distancing. Furthermore, we also monitoring passenger counts to allow for social distancing and adjusting all our alternative bus service levels in real time to address crowding whenever possible. But we need to start from somewhere. Before we transform, we need to set, set the foundation for the program. We must first renew the tracks. We must do this to improve safety, reliability, and reduce travel time by removing this low zones that you experience today. As you may recall, our new approach started in fall 2019. While we made significant progress last year, this slide that you, you see right now summarizes the remaining work to be done. At the end of 2000, uh, 2020, we want to address 11 miles, which represents 24% of the Green Line track. To put this into perspective, we will accomplish five times the amount of track work completed in 2019. Remaining work will be 16.7 miles or 36% of the Green Line tracks for which design is underway as part of the Green Line Transformation Program. The planned work for 2020 includes tracking intersection upgrades on the C, B, and E branches, continued work on the D branch track and signal replacement project, station consolidation at two locations on the B branch, and the rehabilitation of the Lichmere Viaduct in coordination with the Green Line extension. As you can see, we have a lot of improvements planned for 2020. But the obvious questions that I get from many of you is, why haven't we done this sooner? The challenge is that we only have four hours every day to perform this work. The other 20 hours is devoted to subway service. Because of this challenge, the past few years, we have used early nights and weekends to perform this work. However, it is not enough. There's not enough productive time because of the hours required each shift to be energized, re-energized, and test, and test the systems necessary for regular train service. So after much analysis and consideration for your, of your feedback that we heard you loud and clear last year, we have taken a new approach. By shutting down service for full consecutive weekdays and weekends, we can maximize efficiency and leverage full access to the tracks to do multiple types of work at the same time amplifying the results achieved during the work window and expediting the pace of improvements that you want much sooner. Therefore, the upcoming full access on the E branch will allow us to complete a year's worth of night and weekend work in just 28 days. So Ben, can you take us through the details of this work in August, please? Thank you, Angel. So the E branch is a, a rather unique portion of the Green Line in that um, it actually starts out operating as a streetcar from Heath Street all the way to Brigham Circle. And it operates in the middle of the street without a dedicated lane. So it operates with automobiles and other buses. Um, and by the time it gets to Brigham Circle, it changes to uh, more regular light rail operation in the median of the street with the dedicated right of way, crosses several intersections before entering the Green Line Tunnel at the Symphony Portal. And as Angel alluded to earlier, um, we've been working on the C Branch right now. 
and we're finishing up work next week. And our intention is to go directly from the C branch into another month's worth of work on the E branch, a 28 day closure from August 2nd to the 29th. During this closure, we'll close down the entire surface portion of the Green Line from Heath all the way through Northeastern and closing Symphony Station as well. And busing will occur from Heath Street all the way to Prudential. Next slide, please. The nature of the work is threefold. Essentially, we'll be, we'll be doing three different types of activities. First, we'll be doing what we call full depth replacement of track. On the right hand side of your screen, that is a section that we'll be addressing. The section between Forsyth Street all the way to Symphony Portal, will trains go down into the actual subway. So full depth is basically ripping up all the existing track, laying, uh, basically reaffirming the, the foundation, placing new ballast, placing new ties, and new running rail. The second type of work we're going to be doing is similar, but we're going to be performing it in between Heath Street down the hill to Riverway. And like I said earlier, this is the section of track that ac actually operates in the middle of the street. So we'll have to take uh, a lane in each direction to essentially rip up the pavement, replace all of the track down the hill, which is about 1400 feet, and cover it with new pavement. So that happens between Heath and Riverway. And lastly, we're going to be doing full depth intersection reconstruction, where we go through different uh, vehicle intersections and pedestrian intersections and replace them from the bottom up. This includes seven different locations that will be addressed during the 28 day surge, uh, as seen on the map. And two of these locations are especially important. The first being the fire department, which is used exclusively by the fire engines at that location, and the Huntington and South Huntington Avenue intersection, which is a critical node between the city of Boston and Brookline, which will be taking out for five days. We're doing all this work basically to improve um, the reliability of service, to reduce the, the likelihood of service disruptions, to improve travel times in both directions by the elimination of 3,800 feet of slow zones, and by improving all of these intersections and pedestrian crossings, making a more accessible and smoother experience, not only for our riders, but for drivers, bicyclists, and other pedestrians. And I'd just like to keep in mind that, you know, all this work does involve the use of a lot of heavy machinery moving around 24 seven. And one thing we do take seriously is trying to limit the noise and the environmental impacts on the communities that we serve. And so um, there are a variety of strategies that we're using, but typically we're trying to minimize sustained noise. So, you know, limiting the use of equipment that's just idling for a long period of time, lining hoppers and other uh, containers with sound deadening material. And in general, just having a, an assurance team that can, um, you know, keep check on whether noise conditions get out of hand. So next slide, please. So we're doing a lot of work spread over a long distance. This has never really been done before uh, to this extent on the E branch. And the, key, the important thing to keep in mind as you look at this schedule is that we won't be working in all of these locations at the same time. So there's gonna be essentially two different work groups that'll be working on the E branch. The first one will be working at South Huntington Avenue, which will be working the full duration uh, during the month of August, from August 2nd, Saturday, all the way to Saturday, August 29th. The second group will be working um, on the other side of the E branch, closer to Symphony Portal, and moving every weekend or every other weekend to different intersections and addressing those areas one at a time. So you have essentially one group that's working at Heath Street, sustained for the entire month, and another roving work group that'll be addressing each one of the intersections one at a time. So next slide, please. And you, you all might be wondering, so if we're taking the E-Branch out of service for 28 days, 
what are we gonna be doing for alternative service? So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Tamika Thibodeau, who will take you through the options that we are um, giving customers. Thank you, Ben. Good evening. And I will spend a few minutes to talk about the alternative service and the traffic management plan that we have developed in collaborations with the city. We have taken a proactive approach to better understand current utilization of the Green Line. As you might imagine, we selected August as the period for the closure, but the understanding that the travel demand traditionally reaches its lowest point when people are vacationing and schools are out. While we are taking advantage of these demand and minimizing it, we still need to support our riders. So what is the demand? To learn what the current use is, we have staff located at each of the nine E-Branch service stations last Tuesday afternoon and had them physically count the Green Line riders. Using these counts, we were able to evaluate the direct impact of the Green Line closure to our customers to ensure that the bus service we employ to replace the Green Line is adequate and provide safe, timely service. Like you, we are very concerned with the replacement of the buses and allow customers to sustain social distancing. Thus, our plan supports a maximum bus load of 20 riders. Some of our data results is shown to the right of your screen. See how the peak correspondence shift changes around 7 a.m., 3 p.m., and 11 p.m.? This will help define our supplemental bus needs at by the time. We are currently using both peak demand periods and station demands to get the right side bus fleet for everyone's safety. We were utilizing shuttle bus service along with the 39 bus in order to have a safe, satisfying peak demand to move people safely through the corridor between a minimum of three to five minutes headway during peak periods and reduced bus headways during non-peak periods. We rely on Yankee Bus as a private carrier, and they were using low floor, MBTS style buses, and also coach buses. All Yankee buses are accessible. On the weekends, the MBTA will be utilizing their own buses. We will be monitoring bus demands throughout the closure to assure that we have enough buses on hand to service all riders safely. The MBTA is committed to avoid unnecessary impact to transportation, mobility, during these urgent needs to upgrade the track infrastructure. You can expect us to offer clear signage and to have customer service representatives on all site to help riders located by the nearest bus stop while the green line is out of service. Construction activity bring a level of uncertainty regarding how to get around, but we will assure an adequate signage display to clearly mark where to board the replacement bus service. We were also committed to provide timely updates to our website and public communication channels so that the community has up-to-date information, all traffic patterns and bus stop locations changes throughout. For travelers who come from outside the region by their vehicles, we will set up changeable messages signs 48 hours before construction starts and warn them to seek alternative routes while the green line is under construction. Construction will be performed up and down Huntington Ave and South Huntington Ave. During the various construction phases, the contract will be setting up work zones in the roads to constrict traffic moving around the work zones. On South Huntington, the work zone will occupy the center of the roadway where the tracks are. All traffic will be operating outside of the work zone with one lane operating inbound and one lane operating outbound. There will be no street parking. This work zone layout will be evident to both the track lies in the street and also further to South Huntington, South Huntington Ave in front of the VA hospital where the contract will be storing materials and equipment. We plan to rebuild the intersection of Huntington Ave on the weekend of August 20th through the 25th, that's Thursday through Tuesday, with restricting traffic even further to operate in a alternative pattern direction by police officers. We will rebuild the intersection at Longwood, Ruggles, and Forsyth Way and will temporarily adjust bus stops away from the intersections. These intersections will be rebuilt over a three-day weekend period. For intersection on Forsyth Way and Parker Street, 
the contractor will occupy the left lane to gain access to the truck bed. But these left lanes contained in the work zones, all bus, bike, and auto traffic will be carried in the right lanes. Foresight, foresight Way bus stop will be moved to Museum and Opera Place bus stop and will move to the YMTA pedestrian crossing. We will maintain the bus stops at Heath Street and Backer Hill during construction. The bus stop in front of the VA hospital will be adjusted slightly above to the outbound to be away from the work zone. The Riverway stop will be adjusted outside of the work zone onto Huntington Ave to free up the intersection area. 105 South Huntington Ave will be monitored throughout the construction. Police officers will be monitoring Huntington and South Huntington curve throughout the construction. And just so you know, existing Blue Bike Station will be available at six locations on Huntington Ave. You can always visit bluebikes.com to learn more. I know the community is interested in, in hearing about where and when work will take place. And as a project manager, Gwen can talk about what to expect at specific locations along the E-Branch. Gwen? Thank you, Tamika. Um, so as Tamika said, I'm going to go into a little more detail about the when and the where that this construction is going to be going on. Um, to start off, I'm going to go from kind of from the bottom here and work my way up on this graphic that you see before you. Um, so as Ben discussed, we have a few different work areas that we're going to be working through. Um, we have the work on the South Huntington Ave uh, area going from Heath Street all the way down through the South Huntington Hunting Ave intersection. And that is going to go on throughout the entire um, duration of this surge with one specific weekend, the one that is the 22nd and 23rd being dedicated to the intersection of Huntington and South Huntington. Next up, we have the different intersections and full depth track replacement areas that we are doing along Huntington. Um, you can see that by this, we are not going to be in any one area the entire time. We will be moving between different areas as we go through our work. Um, and this is mainly because we do not want to close down any large section or any large number of intersections in a row because we know that you need to be able to pass from one side of the street to the other. So we will always have options available for that to happen. Uh, all throughout this time, we will have some lay down areas that we'll be using for storing materials and equipment as we do our work. Um, there's a couple uh, in South Huntington and at Heath Street that will go throughout the entire surge. And there's a couple at Forsyth Way and Forsyth Street that will be for the first part of this um, time. The last thing that we have near the top are some of the pre-work that we're doing, which you may have already seen. Um, that includes saw cutting the road, um, where we're going to be taking out the asphalt to have it prepared so we can get as much work done during the diversion as we can. And also pre-welding rail so we can reduce the number of joints and the number of maintenance points that we have to deal with in the future. And it also provides a smoother ride on the T. Um, going to the top of this graph, you can see another way of looking at it. Um, if you wanted to find out when there's going to be work in your specific area, you can try to find that along this simplified map. Um, so if you were, say, wondering what's going on in Riverway, you know items number four, number 14, and 15 are shown underneath that and look at the lower part to see when that work is going on. So that's kind of an overview of the when. And next we can go into the where, uh, starting with some of the uh, material storage areas. The first one I'm going to talk about is the South Huntington Ave storage area. And this will be utilizing through the entire surge from August 2nd to the 29th. Um, this is going to take up the center lanes um, that are typically used for travel. And in this area, there's going to be no parking during the construction. And as those will be the lanes to, for all traffic buses and bicyclists. Uh, the next area that we're going to talk about is the Heath Street Loop. Um, now, we are aware that people need to use this parking lot, so we are not going to be taking any of this parking away. And we are going to make sure that we always keep the entrances and exits open for your use. Um, and this also is going to be throughout the entire surge from August 2nd to the 29th. The next area we're going to talk about is Forsyth Way. Um, this is only going to be for the first couple weeks of the surge. Uh, it's August 2nd to the 18th. 
Um, we, this is the area that is the north of Huntington Ave and it's the southbound uh, lane that is going to be taken, including the parking. Um, but we will be redirecting traffic in both directions using that northbound lane. Um, and again, there'll be no parking in this area to make room for traffic going in both directions. Uh, the next area is Forsyth Street. Um, this is going to be very similar to Forsyth Way. Um, it's going to be for the first part of the work we're doing um, from August 2nd to the 18th. Um, this is the section that is uh, south of Huntington Ave. Um, we are again taking the southbound side of this road, um, but we will be blocking off parking so that we can have traffic traveling in both directions here as well. Um, the last area that I want to talk about as far as the laydown area um, is this area on Huntington Ave. Um, and this is specifically for the pre-work, uh, the pre-work welding that we're doing right now. So this is only on weekdays and it's only at nights from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. while we're doing our pre-welding work. Um, and once we get into the actual work of the closure, this will end. Um, but during this time, Parker Street, that intersection will be closed and the left lane of Huntington Ave will be closed in this area, basically between Forsyth Street and Forsyth Way. Um, but the right lane will still be open for traffic so people can still drive through this area. Um, so this is really an overview of all the um, storage laydown areas we're doing for equipment and materials. Um, next, we can go to the actual work zones. Um, there are two main work zones, as Ben was describing. We have the work we're doing on South Huntington, where the uh, trains travel in the street along with traffic. Um, the contractor will be in the center lanes of the roadway, um, and traffic will have travel in basically in the parking lane. So while work is going on, there'll be no parking on the street. Um, we're gonna move bus stops around to make sure that we don't have buses stopping and blocking traffic entirely. Um, the Ruroy bus stop is gonna be moved to Huntington Ave and the back of the bus, back of the hill bus stop will be adjusted towards Heath Street as necessary to make sure that we have room for traffic to pass by. Um, the other main work zone that we will have is along Huntington itself. Um, again, this is a little different because we have the train traveling in between the two roadways. Uh, we have the work zone taking up the left lanes um, and traffic again will go in the right lane uh, and parking will not be allowed to make sure we always have plenty of room for cars, buses, and bicyclists to make it down the roadway without interruption. Um, we will need this room for crane access, uh, vehicles for delivering material, um, and all of the important operations that go on while we're doing this work. Uh, and similar to what we're doing on South Huntington, we're gonna be adjusting the bus stops to make sure that there's always room for traffic to pass through. Um, the last thing that I wanna go over is the traffic management plan. I want everyone to be sure that we do not take lightly the interruptions and difficulties that changing all the traffic around will be. We went very detailed into how we're going to make sure that everyone can move through this area efficiently. Um, we're encouraging all general purpose traffic that can detour around this area to do so just to reduce congestion. Um, we will have officer enforcement to maintain the number 39 and number 66 buses through the Huntington and South Huntington intersection um, and to be uh, aware of any other intersections that we are closing and any other buses that may go through, including the 8, the 47, and any of the area shuttles. Um, we're also going to make sure we just support the local businesses for delivery access or any of their needs during this construction. Um, and we're not forgetting pedestrians. Um, we want to make sure we maintain pedestrian access across the crosswalks, um, anywhere within the work zone, and at all the intersections as this time goes on. We will have enforcement officers around to assist them as well. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to pass this over to Kim, who can go over some of our community engagement and outreach features that we have for this project. Sure, thanks Gwen. So we've been in contact with restaurants in the area who had concerns about their outdoor seating, which is depicted in this slide by blue, blo excuse me, blue boxes along the sidewalk. 
MBTA bus routes and work zones will not affect these areas. And our field engineering team is out multiple times a day and during the night to ensure that our plans and commitments are being followed. We will continue to engage with the local businesses in the area. And we will have staff out during multiple shifts each day to monitor the work zones and be available to address any comments and issues that may arise not only from the riding public, but also the neighboring public that may be affected during this time of construction. In addition to talking to local businesses, GLT has been working with representatives from the city of Boston to assure that when we leave the area, the conditions along the work zone are better than how we found them. Two good examples of improvements are the South Huntington intersection, where we will install new curb ramps and crosswalks with some improvements for bike accommodation through the intersection. The second example is repaving efforts to smooth out the road surface at the track areas and minimize the gaps that are found between the rail and adjoining pavement. Towards the easterly end of the project, we're also working with the city to prepare for the future Green Links Roxbury to Finlay connector across the intersection of Forsyth Way and Parker Street. We will improve these curb ramps and crosswalks and assure that the track reservation area is laid out to accommodate the Green Links crossing plan. We will maintain the trees and plantings along these work zones and we will support local businesses as they navigate the phased reopening of the Commonwealth. We are making these important infrastructure investments today to set the foundation for future improvements to our e-branch. Throughout the 28 days of construction this August and as we advance design plans for future investments, GLT is committed to working with the community to address concerns and keep you informed of our progress. Angel, I know you want to share more about how we will stay connected with our riders in the communities we serve. Thanks, Kim. Yes, I would like to talk about our, our reach efforts because it is very important to me, as it is for the whole team. Just recapping for a moment, since our five public meetings last fall and the announcement of this e-branch e project back in February. GLT has worked on the project details as the scope and schedule has been developed. So additional coordination has been underway, including briefings with legislators and elected officials, ongoing consultation with the City of Austin Transportation Department and Neighborhood Services and briefings with the Disability Commission Advisory Board and the Town of Brookline. We also have met with MASCO, the VA Hospital, the Fenway Alliance, and other neighborhood stakeholders to share the most up-to-date schedule and scope in advance of this construction beginning. I personally deliver myself more than 2,000 flyers in English, Spanish, Russian, and Chinese yesterday to more residential buildings and we will continue to leverage any methods of outreach that our customers believe that can help them to keep informed on the active construction. I believe and the GLT team believes that we want to be responsive and proactive and letting you know what to expect during this construction time. And we have worked with the community to understand the impacts that this construction might bring and how we can minimize those um, concerns. We understand that 24 seven construction periods bring inconvenience to you and your communities. And I want you to remind yourself that this 28 days is worth a year of disruptive services of weekends and nights. And while this is going to be um, inconvenient for you, I want you to remember it's 28 days and we're gonna be out of there. You can keep in contact with us in multiple ways, including the GLT at mbta.com email, our social media, the T alerts, the noise hotline that we have established so you can um, reach out through that channel as well. 
and several outreach coordinators that we have uh, in our team, such as Dino, Reagan, Nancy, and Sherry, and directly to me in the GLT team as well. So we have shared a lot of information tonight, and we welcome your thoughts and questions during the QA that Nancy will be moderating in a few. So I really want to say thank you again for your engagement with our team as we work to deliver these improvements to your community. Nancy. Thanks, Angel, and thanks all of the other presenters and the members of the team who helped put this presentation together. It's a lot of information, as you can see, <clears throat> and I do want I will remind you at the end where you'll be able to see it. So right now we're at your part of the meeting and um, this slide reminds everyone how to participate. Um, if that we have a few questions in our Q&A, which we'll go over. Um, <clears throat> if, you, if you'd rather pose your question verbally, um, raise your hand and use that raise your hand button. Um, and we will unmute you so you can ask that question. We'll probably jump back and forth between the um, Q&A um, written comments and any verbal ones. And attendees who speak Spanish, Russian, or Cantonese, please raise your hand to provide your comments or questions verbally for the interpreters to pose um, to the team. I will first, however, ask um, if any of the elected officials whom I see who are participating would like to make a comment, um, say something at this point. I see Councillor Bach, you've been very involved with um, with uh, the the preparation for the for the shutdown and wonder if you have anything you'd like to say or make a comment. Looks like, uh, hold on a second. Councilor Bach? Hi, Nancy. I just uh, got an alert that Councilor Bach is not using the latest version of Zoom. Okay, I'm here now. Okay, got her. Oh, great. Hi, Kenzie. <laughs> Hi. Great to see you all. Um, yeah, I just want to thank you all for this presentation and say, um, obviously, I think the last bit that Angel shared is really important. Um, just about everybody, you know, everybody from the whole area that's affected being able to be in touch with the team as the work goes on through August. I think we all know how uh, how important this line is to just so many, so many folks in the district on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think, you know, Angel made a strong case for why these improvements need to happen and need to happen now. But I think we're all anxious that the work not go on longer than is planned and that, um, you know, that the team be ready to work with everybody just to adapt things as we, as we run into issues. So I've appreciated, appreciated your guys' partnership so far and uh, care a lot about, you know, making sure that this happens efficiently and in ways that minimize the impact on the neighborhood uh, and, and that we continue to communicate, you know, in many languages and pushing, pushing the news out. Because I think as we've discussed, you know, this is a, a little bit close to when we're actually starting this work here. So, um, my office is definitely going to continue to try to inform everybody about what's going on. So thank you all so much. Thanks very much, Councilor. We appreciate you joining us tonight. I see uh, Representative Vitolo um, uh, would li like to say hello and perhaps make a comment or two. Um, sure. Um, I just want to check and uh, see if any of my colleagues from the legislature from Boston are on the call. We're actually in formal session right now, huh. juggling a few things. And so if they weren't able uh, to make it, that would be totally reasonable. Um, so my name is Tommy Vitola. I'm the state representative from Brookline. And my district, um, you can throw a, maybe a baseball and, and hit the E-line right on the corner of Huntington and South Huntington. But uh, most of my district is um, centered on the C line, which is under construction right now. Essentially, we're a month ahead of the E line. Um, I'm very much interested in making sure that the E line runs well because some uh, members of my district will sneak over to the, to the <laughs> E line. But I wanna let everyone know that we're three weeks into the C line project and I have received exactly zero complaints about service during these three weeks, zero. The buses are running, they're available. Um, some folks are concerned that not all of the construction workers are wearing masks all the time and that's gonna be my negative feedback is make sure um, that our construction workers are being safe, uh, as safe as possible. 
but um, folks on the sea line were just as anxious as I'm sure you are. And so far, uh, things are on, on time. Yes, sometimes the construction is loud, um, but it's not obnoxious all the time. Uh, they try to try to keep it uh, to smaller lengths of time and more in the middle of the day, not in the middle of the night. And, um, you know, we're really excited. And so, um, Councillor Bach, if you have any questions or want to check in with me, you know, I'm always happy to chat with you. And really, I just want to say we've had, um, we worked really hard on it and uh, we've had great experiences so far. Uh, hopefully the last week finishes up strong. Thanks very much, Representative. Appreciate you joining us as well, and, and keep us in touch with anything else you hear. Um, let's see. I there are a couple of folks on phones. If there are any elected officials, you if you um, press star and then number nine, um, we would recognize you. Um, I don't see any other elected officials, but um, I'll wait a second to see if anyone wants to uh, make a comment. No, if not, um, Reagan, why don't we go to a couple of the questions in the Q&A before we go further? Sure. Thank you, Nancy. So we do have a question from Franklin Stolabini um, asking about um, if the new ridership figures for the E-Branch are available. Um, if you're referring, Franklin, to the numbers we showed tonight, you can see them on the graphic that was presented. It'll be, I'm afraid it's really too small for me to read the numbers for you tonight, but um, you could see it online. And if you have any problem with that, just send us a note um, at glt at mbta.com and we will deal with uh, the question. Okay, so I have a few other questions, Nancy. Okay. Um, right. so I have um, a few comments that I'll just note, um, one from uh, Richard Giordano, um, noting that extra care uh, must be taken to ensure that the residents of 100 South Huntington can get in and out of their building on and off the shuttle buses and across the street. Um, he notes that the building contains 125 units of elderly and handicapped housing. Many of the residents are in uh, power wheelchairs and some are quadriplegics. Thanks Richard for that reminder. Um, we will definitely make sure that our construction crews are aware of that and that they are keeping an eye on safety and access for the building. We appreciate that reminder, thanks. And I do have a question from Allison here, um, mm -hmm. who um, she said, she points out that the Heath Street Loop is the turnaround and the stop for the Route 14 bus and, ha and asking how we're going to accommodate those riders going to Dudley, um, where the bus will make its U-turn. I love to give bus questions to Tamika to answer. Tamika, does that sound like one that you can handle? So actually, yes. So. Um... Right when we started this project, we were working with bus operations, um, especially about um, the Route 14. Um, he Street will be a service stop. They do have a plan that um, for a turnaround so we can service all our riders. So we do not want to um, take away one from one um, person for another. Um, that will be on a T alert and on the website once that diversion's in place so you can actually see how it's going to run. But bus operations is working on it, but you will be able to go to the bus stop near the history loop to pick up the bus so you can get to your connection to Delhi Square. Great, thanks Tamika. Um, how about another one and then we'll go to a couple of hands, Reagan. Sure, so um, there was a question from Alan Rosen. Um, he's asking how vehicles will be able to access apartment buildings on South Huntington Avenue for loading and unloading. And I am going to guess that might be Mark. Mark Shaman. Did Mark answer that nope, question? Sorry, I had trouble unmuting. Okay, I'm that's all right. Thanks, Mark. Here I am. Uh, yeah, so uh, that is a difficult problem that, that you'll have to face, and we apologize for that. But uh, I think it's, you know, I don't know which side of South Huntington that you're on, but certainly uh, you'll have to find a way to make a connection, whether it's through Colburn Street on the south side or swinging around perhaps the Jamaica Way on the other side. But that's actually one of the more difficult areas to, uh, to make uh, maneuvers such as you described. Wish I had a better answer, but it is going to take a little driving out of your way. Okay, thank you. And we apologize in advance for that inconvenience. 
Uh, let's see, I'm going to go to a couple of hands and I'm going to start with um, Peter Kamaru. Hello. Hello. Um, I would want like to say how this is great work that's going to be happening in the results that it would deliver, which would be removing a speed restriction and safer pedestrian crosses. But there's one mistake I saw in the dates, which in one of the intersections or areas where you would be doing work, it's, it said Saturday, August 2, but August 2 is actually a Sunday. Well, that's, um, that's a good catch. And I have to say the rest of us didn't catch that. So um, you get the team award of the night, I think. Um, so we will make that correction um, and, and make it clear uh, what days of the week we're working on. Thanks very much, Peter. I appreciate that. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Maggie Cohn. Hi, um, I, one comment is that I actually, I see when I pull up the Q&A on my screen, I see three questions that I think are on a different Q&A list than you seem to have. Um, well, we haven't dealt with all of the questions yet. We're going back and forth between- No, 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 I understand that. But, but when I, you know, when I open it and I ask to see all, all questions in Q&A, I only see three questions and I'm not seeing the questions that you've been reading. Nancy. Yeah. Nancy, this is Reagan. I can answer that. So okay. the, the questions you only see as an attendee, you only see the questions that have already been responded to Maggie, no, um, but all of the other. I'm not seeing questions that have been responded to. Well, I, I, I'm just, I'm saying there just seems to be some duplication of the Q and A list, but can, I will tell you my question that's on that list. Okay. Um, which is that my concern is that after construction, um, will the new trains, which I understand are longer, will they be able to actually make the corner at South Huntington and Huntington? And also, I guess, the, sort of the turnaround at Heath Street. So you're talking about the type 10 trains, is yeah. that right? Yeah, uh, well, they won't, well, I will let Kim Willard answer that question. Kim? Can you hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Yes, um, so um, it will not then, be when this, this is just a state of good repair, um, we will be going back in when we get the final uh, dimensions, which is the car is going out for, um, is out for NTP. It will be awarded um, in by um, January. Um, and then once we get the final dimensions, we will be able to now um, navigate the corners and curves which is, you are exactly right, the Heath Street Loop, which is um, a challenge. So yes, we will have to go back at some point when we finalize, finalize those numbers. Thank you, Kim. Um, Reagan, should we address a couple more of those uh, written out questions? Sure, we do have a, a few here. Um, there is a question from Jan who um, notes that she lives at 650 Huntington and wants to know if um, she'll be able to walk across the intersection. So someone who knows maps is gonna have to answer that question. Is that Gwen or Mark? So Mark is ready to speak. Yes, okay. I saw this question coming. Okay. <laughs> uh, it looks like this location is uh, adjacent to or nearby the Longwood intersection. And uh, Longwood intersection is going to be under construction from the 7th to the 10th of August. So that particular weekend will be difficult to cross at that specific location. Otherwise, uh, that opening, that, that crosswalk and the crosswalks in that area should all be open for you. Uh, during the weekend of the 27th, excuse me, the, the, the 7th to the 10th, uh, it's likely that you'll have to walk a little bit to the west and then cross uh, perhaps up towards um, well, Wigglesworth Street. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, Reagan, uh, how about a couple more? Sure, so Roderick um, asks, um, he points out that the Charlie Card store at Downtown Crossing is currently closed and asks where he can get a senior Charlie Card. And I don't know the answer. Can someone else help us out? Well, 
Well, it doesn't look like we have that answer. Roderick, if you would send us an email at glt at mbta.com, we will find out the answer and send it to you. I apologize. Okay. All right, and then we also have a question from Michael um, who um, it states that the noise hotline and the email is not sufficient. Um, he's requesting a cell phone of a project manager or an on-site foreman. Well, we do have a pretty robust system for answering emails and phone calls. The phone calls uh, are recorded. Um, uh, well, the information is recorded. It comes to the team who answer, who directs all of the questions to the senior directors. So you have direct access to the people who are running the project. Um, we found that in the past, the cell phone is not as efficient and sometimes uh, the, the the RE doesn't hear the phone or is too busy or there's safety issues. So we found that this system works really well and we've answered a lot of questions on the C branch work and we will continue to do so. If you have problem getting a response, please point that out to us. But we do, I think, have a pretty effective system. So let's move on, Reagan. Certainly. Um... There was a question from Michael asking if the shuttle buses can be extended from Prudential to Copley as Prudential has uh, fewer transfer options than Copley. We're back to Tamika, I think. So, um, so we can keep that headway that we need. Um, the last stop will be um, Prudential, but the 39 bus is still running. So you can always take the 39 bus, which will go uh, and, and does those same connections. So if you don't want to get on the shuttle, you can jump on the 39. The 39 is also free during this time frame. So uh, feel free to, to take the 39 bus if um, you want to go to Copley. Okay, great. I'll jump over to a couple of hands raised. Uh, Jan Strick. Hi, um, I'm the person at 650 Huntington. Okay. And so I have one other question, which is, uh, will cabs, ambulances, or the ride be able to, so, we, you know, we're on the side, <clears throat> you have to go up to Huntington to Brigham Circle and then come back down to get into our driveway. And so where will be the turnaround point for, um, for emergency vehicles trying to come into the building? Mark, can you address that one? Uh, sure, if I understand the question correctly, uh, if you're concerned about uh, a closure or something that would impact a turnaround at Brigham Circle, uh, the work that we're doing should not impact traffic at Brigham Circle. If it's turning around today, it should be able to turn around in the future. As I said before, the uh, intersection at Longwood Ave is going to be closed over a long weekend. So if you're eastbound, you'll have to go down to uh, one of the next intersections, whether it's Evans Way or down to uh, Ruggle Street to make that turnaround. But there should always be a turnaround available through the median throughout that stretch of roadway, uh, whether Longwood is closed or one of the others is closed, something else will be open. Thank you, Mark. Jan, does that help? Yes, so, okay. Um, let's see, a uh, couple people have asked a question already, so I'm going to go to people who haven't asked one. Reagan, do you have any new questions, new questioners? Sure, yes. Uh, so P. Flaherty at, uh, says that he knows that we're working with businesses, and this is a 28 days uh, versus several months, uh, but the last time this was done, businesses were negatively impacted. Um, he asked to see how deliveries to businesses are going to be managed and accommodated during construction. Mark, I think I'm going back to you, but I know there will be um, detail officers all along the line, um, especially at intersections. Um, can you help out with this question? Uh, well, again, I can give it a shot, sure. Uh, and as you said, Nancy, yes, indeed, there will be police officers all around uh, the construction zones in order to make sure that traffic is moving efficiently and effectively, uh, particularly where we're taking, uh, you know, ex big, <laughs> having some fairly uh, substantial uh, road closures and, and narrowness at certain locations. Uh, we will make sure that we have police officers at multiple locations through these work zones, not just one. So there'll be two, three, and it might even be four at the intersection of Huntington and South Huntington at some points, just to make sure that everything is moving and particularly to make sure that emergency vehicles can get through. 
Thank you, Mark. And, and again, if you're having any problem, please use the hotline or send us an email and we will uh, respond as quickly as possible. Uh, we really don't want you to be inconvenienced more than necessary. Um, let's see. I think I just lost one of the, one of the uh, hands I was going to recognize. So, um, Reagan, where else? What else have we got? Sure. So, um, I, we have Jan's question again. Um, so, there is a question about what would the effect be on Charles Bank, 650 Huntington at Longwood Spur, where residents park on the, in the site on the two-story garage? And Mark, are you familiar with that one? No, sorry, I'm not. I'd have to look into it further. Okay. Um, we will... Um, and, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Nick. No, I was going to say, if we don't know the answer, we will get back to you um, um, with the information. Um, I see Mary... I'm yeah, sorry. I was just going to do Marianne Nelson. Yes, Marianne. had a question, okay. a comment rather, um, asking about the workforce, um, pointing out that there doesn't that the workforce does not seem to be diverse on the C branch construction, and asked about the workforce for E branch. Good question. I think it's probably one that we need to look into, Marianne, um, and we will do so um, and try to share that information. And was that, you raised your hand, Marianne, was that what, probably what you were going to ask? Um, let's see. I see another question about um, rubberized surface, great for pedestrian crossing, but why not at Brigham Circle? And I think there are plans for Brigham Circle. Um, and I would ask, uh, poor Mark, I'm dumping on you tonight. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, so uh, under this contract, there actually isn't going to be very much construction work happening at Brigham Circle, but as Nancy mentioned, we are starting to take a look at what the next steps are, what we're going to have to do again, as, as Kim was saying as well, in terms of, you know, the type 10s, what overall improvements need to be made, and certainly at that point in time, we'll be looking at Brigham Circle and other areas along the streetcar uh, to make sure that whatever uh, we do install there, uh, you know, works out best for pedestrians and bicyclists and motorists and everybody who use that intersection. Rubber is one possibility for sure. All right, thank you. Um, Allison Poltinas, I'm sorry if I mess up your name, are reminding us that the off-campus move-ins happen in August, just a heads up. Some schools are starting their fall semesters early. We, ha we actually have, uh, we've learned about some of the schedules for the schools. You know, some of them are going to have fewer students on campus, but we understand a lot of that happens uh, uh, right before or around September 1st. So we are aware of that and thank you for reminding us and we'll be keeping an eye on that issue. And let's see. Um, so, go ahead. Yeah, Nancy, I think um, if we go to the uh, verbal comments, some of the follow-ups, uh, there's some follow-up questions we okay, can do. Great. All right, Franklin, um, Franklin, can we unmute him? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, Angel and team, for having this meeting. Uh, it's very helpful, and uh, welcome back to the community. Uh, I Obviously, I think this whole process is future-oriented, and we're looking at how best to serve this line in the future. And my sense is this, and it is a bit of a concern, and it relates, because you are doing track work, it actually relates to the placement of the tracks. Uh, as you know, looking forward and Angel having opened the meeting with the comment that safety is the most important aspect of this project. As you know, looking forward, we have passengers boarding and alighting on Huntington Avenue in the middle of the street against oncoming automobile traffic, which very often does not stop. I don't hear, first of all, I don't think from the comments you've made so far that track work is going to be done on that section of Huntington Avenue west of Brigham before you get to the curve. But looking ahead, my question regarding the safety issue at this point in the line is 
what are you saying about boarding and alighting going forward at Parker Hill and at Fenwood Road? The safety issue also comes up again with track placement on, Hunting, on South Huntington Avenue where you're doing a full depth replacement of the track bed. There are times when automobiles, again, will pass the streetcar on the right as the streetcar approaches the stop, not only at Riverway, but also further up at back of the hill. And yet the tracks are being placed back in the middle of the street that basically encourages automobiles to pass the streetcar on the right and again interfere with boarding and alighting. Now, if when you consider the type 10s coming to Boston, if this full depth replacement is in place at that time, again, it seems to preclude any possibility of protecting passengers, boarding, and alighting. So those are my issues, and I don't think uh, that this project that you're undertaking for the future with regard to where the tracks are being placed and the lack of any work being done on Huntington Avenue at Parker Hill, whether this actually serves the interests of public safety. And I would ask that you really think more broadly about not just simply putting the tracks back where they've always been, which is where they have always been, but thinking about the future of this portion of the line, because I think you know from conversations not only with Rich Giordano and with me and others, that uh, we are very concerned that the Heath Street uh, route maintained in perpetuity, if I can put it that way. Thank you very much for listening. Is there any answer to my question? Thank you very much. I would ask Ben or Desiree to address that long term. Or Angel, did you want to address it? Yeah, Angel, yeah, please. Uh, so thank you, Franklin. Uh, you bring a lot of good uh, points. And this is something that uh, we have been looking at. Uh, we completely are aware. And this is frankly what we face. Uh, we are working for a better future for the Green Line as a whole system. And that means looking for how to have better track alignments for our pedestrians, for our passengers, for, for everything. That takes time. That takes further design. And one of the things that we are considering, and this is something that it was already much analysis went to it. Um, in 2019, in 2018 actually, to do, uh, to when we were going through a modernizing a fleet, modernizing the fleet is gonna take into account all the track alignments that you're talking about and how we can do better. So it is, it is going to take years for further design. But one thing, frankly, that we couldn't wait for, you're right. The, the, what, what you're bringing to our attention is not going to be addressed and this foundation that we're just setting, which is giving you back to the service that you deserve for the norm, for the, what, you, what you don't have right now because of the state of good repair. So we, for safety reasons, we have track conditions that we needed to address and it's much needed to be done. And we cannot wait until next years before that comes. So we needed to really address that to set the foundation and at least be able to fix our tracks so we can ride and, and everyone can ride safely on the vehicles that we have and the legacy fleet that we have today while we work for the future. By any means, the Type 10 supercar is not just um, bringing the, the car and, and that's it. We're bringing into consideration along all the different branches and what can we do better for track alignment and anything else? But I also want, so it starts with a foundation, frankly. I need you to be patient. I need you to be patient with us because for us, it was very important first to set the foundation and eliminate all those slow zones that you're right now facing and make that back in aesthetic repair while we work for the future and do further designs and further work that we have ahead of us 
to be able to address the concerns that you're bringing to our attention. I will definitely would like if, if Ben or Desiree wants to join me and add anything else that I'm missing. But I really do appreciate your honesty and bringing that to us because this program is about that. It's about thinking how we can meet the needs of today and while we figure out the future for a better future. But thank you. Desiree or Ben, did you want to add anything? Yes, and, and it, these are all um, fear points that were brought up, but currently the um, MBTA together with MassDOT is embarking on a number of different studies that is currently looking at the um, corridor itself. Um, it has not been brought out yet to the public, but it will be coming out soon as the study go on. So it's not only about um, the type tens, it's also about the bus budding, how they'll be able to bud and to board at um, level budding. So there's a number of things happening for this area that will create mass improvement for the way people board and all board at the same time. So maybe soon in the maybe later uh, sometime next year we will be hearing about it in more detail but yes mass mass dot is also looking at this in combination with the mbta thank you very much desiree and angel i do have um for for um for mr kersey i do have a phone number a senior charlie card phone number if you're still with us i'm going to read off that phone number and um, we'll also um, see if we can track you down and share it. It's 617-222-3200. Once again, 617-222-3200. So thank you, Sherry, I think, for uh, finding that number for us, for Mr. Percy. Um, Maggie Cohn, did you have a follow-up? Sorry for the pause. It always takes me a minute to find That's that. That's all right. I did, I did, and that, that was just really, that was an interesting piece of information, uh, the response to Franklin's question, and thank you for that. Um, I'm glad to know that the T is looking long term. Um, I guess what would give me a level of comfort, because it sounds like uh, once those new cars are brought in, uh, it may require additional work to have them run at least as far as Heath Street, and so I would like to hear that the T is committed to maintaining the route at least as far as it goes now. I, I know we have had uh, situations in the past where there has been an interest in discontinuing the E-line after Heath Street. So um, I would like to know that as part of your studies and research, you're looking at ways to make it work so that, so that T service, the E-line the e in particular, will continue. Uh, all the way to Heath Street. Uh, Kim, can you address just the, the type, the new cars and, and the challenges perhaps in brief so that uh, Maggie understands that we're thinking very hard about them? Yes, we are. And as Desiree just said, a lot of studies have to occur on the corridor um, to ensure that the two car train can navigate the Heath Street loop. Um, again, it's all um, in the design and study phase. Um, it is certainly our intent to um, have the service maintained in that Heath Street loop and the E line. So I hope that answers your question as we progress on this journey. We can certainly keep you informed. Um, again, significant studies are taking place. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Giordano, I think you had maybe a follow-up or another question. And I, yeah, there you are. No? Okay, now do you hear me? I, I hear you, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, I want to thank you guys for doing this. Um, you know, to be honest, I have to comment that it took an, an amazing amount of prodding and pushing uh, to get you guys to put this meeting together and to run it the way you are. And the only reason you've dropped the flyers that you did to the thousands of places is that we bugged you to do that and gave you a list of places to do that to. So, um, you know, I appreciate that you've done this. I don't want you to pat yourselves on the back too much because it took a lot of pushing from a lot of people to get you to do what you've done. 
and everything I've heard so far is not a flat out guarantee that no matter what, the service will continue to Heath Street when you have the two car train. We don't need to hear that you have studies, that you're working on it. We need a guarantee that no matter what, the service has to run to Heath Street because you've got to service the VA hospital and you have to service 100 South Huntington, the building that I uh, put in the chat. So I don't want to hear about studies and you know, you're working on this. I want to know flat out, will you say you guarantee the service will run to Heath Street no matter what, period. Can you answer it that way? So Mr. Giordano, first of all, I'm going to correct you because the plans for this meeting as well as the sea line were developed in February. So um, I'm not going to pat myself on the back, but we never start, a, MBTA never starts a major project like this without reaching out. Uh, secondly, we did appreciate um, getting the list of the addresses and the buildings that we should focus on and the languages. I mean, we had a lot of those plans already in progress, but we really appreciate the help that you gave us and the suggestions. And Angel really enjoyed actually visiting all the sites and talking with people and seeing um, the entrances and the way the buildings are laid out. As to a commitment to keep anything forever on behalf of the MBTA, we can't make that commitment. Um, clearly we're working, the team is working very hard on the E-branch and we anticipate um, you know, improvements in service, getting the tens, the, the new cars in the future to work on the E line and on every uh, element of the green line. So, um, you know, I don't know anyone, including the GM, who can promise ad infinitum, but I do think that you should feel comfortable that the investment in the green line that's being, make, being made right now is an important and significant one, and that um, the MBTA is going to continue to serve people along the green line. And we'll go to another, another Q&A question, Megan. Yes, so um, Michael had a question earlier about confirming um, that there will be full pedestrian access retained at all crosswalks within the work zone. Um, he said that one graphic stated that there will be a crosswalk access only at points of the crosswalk at the ends of the work zones. I'm gonna ask maybe Ben to, take, to answer that one. Ben? Uh, yeah, so it, as, I'm, I'm, as I'm understanding the, um, the question, um, we will be taking certain pedestrian crossings uh, out of service to replace them. And for the majority of these crossings, there'll be just a sort of um, detour for pedestrians that'll be around 100 to 150 feet uh, maximum. So um, Whenever we do take a pedestrian crossing out, it's just kind of the nature of our system that there happens to be a, a crossing within about 150 to 200 feet of wh whichever section of track we're taking out. Thank you. And let's see. Um, so I have, I have a few more, Nancy. Sure, um, so Alan Rosen had a follow-up question. I believe his earlier question was about the uh, loading uh, and unloading of materials. Um, he asked if there will be any problem with the police if vehicles that are loading and unloading large quantities of goods to pull up onto the sidewalk next to apartment building entrances on South Huntington Avenue. Uh, maybe Ben or Desiree, and um, what do you think happens out in the world when this, when, when, de when these uh, deliveries need to be made? I think, I think this question was addressed earlier by Mark. This is a difficult section to track South Huntington to Huntington. So down from Heath Street down to Riverway. Um, there, there's just a, it is a, it is a difficult section uh, of roadway. And, but I will say that there's gonna be police detail that can um, kind of assist in the event that there are uh, any conflicts out there, so. Thank you. I see Desiree nodding as well. Oh, Mr. Kersey, I'm so sorry. It looks like that number did not answer. Um, Actually, I think that that number was Nancy. That question was before we gave the number. Oh, okay. Sure. From him. All right. Um, so, wait, we do have a few others. If okay. We can. Great. So, uh, Marianne has a comment. Um, she wanted to remind residents that the Mission Hill Health Movement is doing a noise study 
and that they can download the noise score app and measure and map noise levels, which they can add to the study, as well as document noise letters uh, for complaints to the MPTA. Thanks, Marianne. And certainly uh, send us a note and give us a link to Mission Hill Health Movement so we can uh, stay in touch. Um, and we have another comment from Jan pointing out that there is also a problem getting off the E-line walking across the street in the winter, um, pointing out that you have to walk over the tracks and if it is icy, um, it can be dangerous. And I agree. Um, also being a green line rider, um, I walk very carefully. I find that the new rubber um, crossings are much better. We've had some replaced on, this, on the D-line um, that I ride. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on that issue. Um, Alan has a question about why aren't school bus type lights um, installed on street trolleys to alert drivers to stop when trolleys are stopped to pick up and drop off passengers on the street? That's an interesting question. Kim, can I throw that one to you? Yes, ma'am. So um, thank you, Mr. Rosen, for your question. And um, we are actually currently under um, going underway a mod for the Type 9, so it will have that light. It actually emulates um, the Toronto fleet. Um, we looked at how they did it because it's not a bifold door, it's a side door. So there's a retrofit that's going on, so the lights will indicate that um, passengers will be um, getting off um, almost like a bus. Um, also um, in the type 10, we are doing the same. There is a line um, in, the, um, in the contract or when the contract gets firmed up that we will have lighting um, that will flash when the, the train stops to um, let passengers off. So we have heard that concern many times, even from safety. So thank you for bringing that question up. I hope that answers it. That's great to hear, Kim, actually, because if I'm driving, sometimes I see people scurrying by and uh, yeah, it, is, it looks like a, you know, a, a good solution. Um, I think Tamika maybe um, wants to add something to my answer um, earlier, Tamika, on the, on the uh, service. Um, so it's GLT um, is very committed to keeping service going to He Street and, and, and none of our projects or plans are about eliminating any stops um, past Brigham Circle. So um, you do have our commitment that, that as our program, we want to keep the He Street service all the way going up to, to He Street. Thanks, Tamika, for making that addition. I appreciate it. I hope. Um, and we're getting close to the end here. Are there any more? Um, Reagan in the uh, Q&A. So I will confess that I made a mistake. Um, I saw Mr. Kersey's follow-up, not his third email. So my apologies. <laughs> Apparently the customer service number hasn't worked for him. So we will get his information and um, follow up with him to make sure he gets that card. I think if that works. Okay, great. Thank um, you. So you can email us at, I think when you registered, you left your email address, but um, we will reach out to you, but if that doesn't work, please always email us at glt at mbta.com. Okay, anything else that um, we want to answer, Reagan? Yeah, we have a few more. Okay. Um, there's a shuttle question. Um, where will the shuttle be, out, where would the shuttle outbound be picking up at Prudential? Um, and there's a follow up question. These are, these are from Allison again. Um, talking about why recent Route 39 service changes are not announced on the website. Um, apparently, the buses are not using Dalton Street anymore. Mika? Looks like she's thinking so, about this one. You want me to repeat it? Yes, because I was actually getting the answer for the Charlie Cart store. So if it's oh, a okay. new, <laughs> so if, um, if it's an, a renewal, you can do it online. And if it's a new one, they're actually putting um, going to be open up the uh, stores uh, shortly so that you can go in to apply. All right, All it's, right. That it's a new cool. card. It's a new card. So I think once we get that date, we can share it with Mr. Yes. Uh, Kersey then. Okay, great. Okay. Um, oh, so, Tamika, wh where will a shuttle out outbound be picking up at Prudential? That was the first question. Outbound at Prudential. 
So heading heading towards um, he was heading towards Heath Street. It'll be at the Prudential stop right outside the Green Line shuttle bus by the Cheesecake Factory. Okay. And then, can, do you, can you talk about why recent Route 39 service changes are not announced on the website? Apparently, buses are not using Dalton Street anymore. I do not know why the 39 bus is not um, okay. using Dalton Street, but we can definitely find out that answer from our uh, bus op counterparts and get back to that person. Okay, Allison, if you'd like to email us, um, we'll definitely uh, get you a reply. And, uh, and then, go ahead. I think those are all the questions in the chat we have, Nancy. Okay, all right. Um, I do see one hand up, um, P. Flaherty. Is that right? Yes, it's Patricia Flaherty. Um, oh. Hi, um, I'm, thank you for doing this meeting. Thanks for the folks who um, helped to organize it. And I would just like to ask, um, because this does feel better than the last go round um, when the replacement happened and the impacts were over a longer period of time. However, um, we won't know the impacts until you're in the construction mode. And I'm, and while people can reach out as individuals, will there be another public meeting organized during um, the first couple of weeks or several days after construction commences so that if there are issues they can be brought to this forum? Um, I think the, the best option would be if there are buildings or, or specific areas where there are consistent problems that we could address them that way. Um, we will, of course, continue to answer any um, questions that come in or uh, problems that are you know, addressed to us um, and get an answer on them. But um, typically, um, what we try to do then is hand, after construction starts is handle it um, in the area, unless Ben or Tamika or anyone wants to add anything different. Does that sound good? No? Okay. All right. Yes. But uh, please don't be shy. I'm sure you can let us know if there's anything that comes up that we really need to address. And um, we appreciate you bringing that idea to our attention. But um, typically um, addressing where it's happening and, and coming up with a solution with the contractor is, is a pretty specific way to handle that. And I see a couple thanks to Tamika for her statement about Heath Street. So thank you, Tamika. Um, and I don't see any new questions. And so, um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna not say your name well. Nusrat Hassan. Are you unmuted? Can you unmute? I've I've unmuted you. I'm oh I think I Nancy I was trying to unmute her. Okay, all right. I'll leave it alone. You do it. Oh, it's not working. The no. unmuting. I'm not sure if um, you're using the most recent version of Zoom. That could be a problem. Um, I'm so sorry. Uh, we don't seem to be. I've I've unmuted you, but it doesn't seem to be working. If you'd like to email us a question, you can do that, uh, please, and I apologize. Or you can put it in the Q&A as well. Right. You can try that. Um, if not, um, we're at 729, so I think what we're going to do at this point is thank everyone um, very much for participating in the meeting tonight. Going to remind you of the hotline number, uh, which is 508 676 3517. Um, it's right there on the noise hotline slide. You can write us at glt at mbta.com. You can find this presentation at mbta.com slash GLE meeting. That's mbta.com slash GLE meeting. Thank you all again for joining us this evening and please let us know as construction begins if you have questions or additional problems or comments and we appreciate your participation and have a good night.